coming. Um, I am at the Fowler. This is a series called Fowler in the City. It's about co-designing programs with cultural leaders in uh, the city of Los Angeles. So rather than building buildings in other neighborhoods of Los Angeles, the Fowler co-designs to increase our audiences and build relationships. And this is very much a conversation. It's a conversation between the two of us, and I'm honored to be part of this conversation and in this gallery. You do wonderful work here, and your works are phenomenal, and they leave a lot for conversation. So this is a conversation between the two of us, but also a conversation within this community that we have now gathered together. So I thought this was a good place to start, to, to look at artistic process, and also how the works in this space are organized on a repeating theme. So I want to start by asking Fodorizan about one, what brings these works together? What was the genesis? And what was your inspiration? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, thank you so much uh, for taking the time uh, to attend this talk. It's my honor to uh, share my exploration with you all. And uh, please accept my uh, apology because um, uh, if I made any mistake uh, because of language barrier. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Very <laughs> great. Uh, the initial of this idea was formed shortly after I departed from Iran. And uh, I felt a sort of a mutation uh, when I, uh, with uh, smashed plastic bottles when I used to uh, line them up in my, uh, on my desk. Um, and they were pressed easily like human under pressure. And it reminds me human uh, condition, fragile condition. And then I decided to uh, explore and study this form with variety of techniques. At the beginning, I was trying to just uh, find a human body on it and see body, a uh, human body on it. But later, I was uh, understood that it doesn't need to just uh, find any uh, limbs of body on it and they are pure by themselves. So no further uh, addition were needed. So I started to just uh, exploring this form, this uh, unique form uh, with a variety of techniques. And then uh, gradually this uh, genderless, uh, like uh, and, uh, faceless and also uh, became a symbol of uh, human body for me. So I was inspired them basically with uh, smashed plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I really would encourage if everyone, if you feel comfortable, please step forward because right now we're looking at drawings which like ask for a close look at. So here at this part of the exhibition, you start off with drawings and they're all focused. The theme, the visual weight of these compositions are your protagonists, so to speak. <laughs> Um, and maybe we'll find out what you call them later. So they're protagonists. And so one, going back to artistic process, do you start by drawing the main protagonists and then integrating them into a larger composition? Or do you consider these finished and complete works? Or possibility a combination of the two? Um, I usually warm up my idea with uh, drawing with different kinds of techniques. And uh, a study form usually is the first level of my exploration. So uh, when I uh, started to explore these uh, smash plastic bottles, I started to just uh, heating, boiling, and then compressing them, and then uh, before drawing. So uh, that was the way that I started to make my uh, exploration. Mm -hmm. And um, I try to figure out with different uh, techniques like charcoal, watercolor, and pastel. But because of the space limitation, we decided to just have a few of them here. Thank you. Yeah. And so if we transition from these drawings, and one, we should point out that these drawings date back to 
2015, is that correct? Yes. So 2015, and you you define that as sort of the genesis yes. of this series of works that we're all going to enjoy today. And so from going to drawing, we're going to go to another work, which is right here, behind mm -hmm. some, in front of others, um, which is oil and acrylic on canvas. Mm -hmm. So here we're, we're, we're moving to a different medium. Yes. And I would like to... I'd like to use this work, one, to again talk about your technique and the mediums. Mm -hmm. So first of all, can you speak a little bit about your use of oil and acrylic on yes. one composition, on one canvas? Uh, in this collection, I uh, use a combination of oil and acrylic. And I usually use acrylic when I need to make and uh, uh, transfer texture onto the canvas. Mm -hmm. And uh, because and acrylic is more, is it more flexible? Yeah, more uh -huh. flexible and it's easy to work with, with that. I mean, easy to transfer and make the texture. And uh, it's, it dries so fast. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, it's particularly in this uh, painting here on this decay wall, I benefited um, acrylic to transfer all those uh, like this uh, bubble wrap uh, texture onto canvas and then I used a thin uh, layer of uh, oil in order to cover and preserve all those uh, techniques. And this is the way I, I usually um, mix these two uh, medium together. But uh, generally, um, oil is a more authentic medium for me and because mm -hmm. it's not as flat as uh, acrylic and uh, uh, and it doesn't change I mean the color doesn't change when it uh, when it dries but because of having a lot of uh, I mean detail like uh, especially on uh, architectural structure on decay part, uh, part I need to have a uh, work with this uh, medium which is which has high capacity and uh, um, the ability of uh, make, getting mixed easily, especially for the larger scale uh, painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, most important, uh, and also having um, a, slow, uh, a slow dry nature, yeah, nature. And then most importantly, uh, uh, to work on it uh, for a long time. That's why I chose uh, Oil because it was a suitable, uh, perfect, I mean, uh, medium for this uh, mm. series. Mm. And this In Pursuit of Light, it exemplifies what we're seeing over and over again. It's like repetition of mm -hmm. uh, large format, in terms of your painting, a certain palette, mm -hmm. which communicates certain poetic aspects of your theme, um, the protagonist, and also the importance of architecture, and we'll turn to architecture in a moment as a narrative structure, mm -hmm. but also what's going to repeat throughout our experience today is just how how beautifully and how powerfully you represent light. Mm -hmm. And so that chiaroscuro, this light and dark contrast, is that what you create with the oil or the acrylic? Uh, I think I mostly benefit uh, this kind of things with oil um, mm -hmm. because uh, acrylic mostly is like a textural uh, medium for me, and I yeah. use the uh, use acrylic for this kind of things. Yeah. And then, so let's go. Let's move over to this side of the gallery, and let's talk about architecture. Because architecture is one of those other aspects that we see the rhythm of it in this beautiful exhibition. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do a dance on the floor. <laughs> so, we're gonna. All right, desolate existence, mm -hmm. and also untitled 2023. So, if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the most recent works in the exhibition. That's correct. Yeah. But before we go to Untitled, I'd like us to, to look at this painting. Mm -hmm. And can you speak a bit about how you use architecture as both a compositional frame in which your, your protagonists are organized, um, but also like the metaphorical, allegorical value mm -hmm. of, of space and architecture? Um, 
I usually make my uh, composition and uh, also architectural st uh, structure based on uh, based on my subject feeling and situation. And uh, with that, I try to zoom in and zoom out to figure out how uh, they look and how they move uh, and how they communicate with uh, each other. And uh, I usually, um, for some of my paintings, I intentionally try to uh, refer to some architectural places, but uh, to some region. But for some of them, no. I, for example, for this one, I didn't, uh, I mean, mention any specially, a special uh, architectural structure. But that was so interesting that I had a lot of feedback from people that. They told me it reminds them uh, and uh, resembles ruin war for them. And uh, uh, many people, even from the uh, Iranian uh, community, they told me it reminds them uh, Syria, war Syria. And also many people in Iran told me it looks, for them, uh, it reminds them of uh, BAM earthquake. So um, for some of them, I didn't uh, mention uh, intentionally. Uh, in order to just uh, bring uh, a state of surveillance uh, to my work. But to, in this work, uh, no, I try uh, to just um, uh, express my uh, figure, desolate figure who were uh, sneaking around, uh, I mean, in this green city. Mm. And that's a way that your works draw people in despite the background. So as for example, and other artists have picked up on this as well as you, that when we're looking at war torn or desolate lands, they all look the same after well, irrespective of where they are geographically. Um, and that's sort of what pulls people in to your narrative. And then turning to Untitled 2023, this is one of the is it the latest work in this yes. exhibition? Can you speak to this piece? Uh, honestly, I I usually don't like to uh, making my subject uh, um, look like uh, in a weak position. But in that time, uh, when uh, the uprising, the recent uprising happened, I experienced a sort a sense of uh, desperation and paralysis, isolation. And uh, the way that I feel from, I mean, the way that I experience and uh, communicate with my surrounding was like, I'm so detached and alienated from my surrounding. That's why I, the only work that I could work during that time was this one. So I tried to just accumulate it, uh, accumulate my uh, and pile them, uh, my figures in a tight box, and then um, yeah. Is is this tight box uh, a cell? Yeah, it could be like um, a cell light or yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so moving from architecture and architecture as metaphor, allegory. I want to move um, to the fact that you're an artist that works in a number of different media, right? And so if we move to this fabric sculpture here. Um, one, so are you exploring over and over again? And we didn't say, do you have a name for these protagonist figures? No, no. <laughs> numbering them like alien one, alien two, or alien one, two. alien two, yeah. Which you see yeah. in the sculpture, and is this as well? Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why I ask is because, and we'll see it later on, the title of the show is called Alienation, <laughs> and as we were discussing earlier, like the more you look at these works um, in the different media, the more you have this empathetic response to them because these themes of feeling alienated, being isolated, 
feeling um, sort of oppressed by socio-political systems is something that we share, right? Mm -hmm. So they may have no face, but they actually are very human. Um, so with that, and that's something we can talk about in the next section, can you tell us, one, from the artistic point of view, which medium do you feel most comfortable in? Do you work in fabric and ceramic because it reinforces your approach to oil acrylic on canvas, or do you equally enjoy working in the different media? Um, I usually work with different mediums based on what I need during the process. And uh, they usually overlap with each other based on what I need. So I can say that for these stories, for sure, drawing was the beginning. Uh, I mean, the first uh, menu that I started. But during the process, they overlap with each other. For example, uh, in painting, I had to um, make them, and uh, I had to experiment with dimension in order to uh, figure out how they look when they move different. Yeah. So I had to make them to, and sometimes I had to uh, modeling them in my painting to figure out uh, what it, what, how they look uh, in different ways. For this one, actually, um, after drawing that I decided to go through the three dimensions, fabric was uh, one of those uh, mediums which was so uh, flexible and. Uh, I try to uh, work with this uh, in order to um, examine how it looked like uh, if I, uh, uh, with different, I mean, uh, how it looked like when I, when I do different uh, exertion of pressure on it. So with uh, making fabric, I could realize that how uh, it became stretched, uh, uh, stretched out. The form. So um, I made this um, a sculpture with um, uh, scrap uh, clothes with uh, uh, hands hem, and the way that uh, this fabric, uh, the potential qualities that this fabric has, I mean, like um, the fragmentation and patching and fusing them, uh, the all those, um, I mean. Uh, potential qualities uh, was the reason that I picked this uh, fabric to make uh, this fabric sculpture. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I'm, when I saw it, these wonderful animated little sculptures, <laughs> of, I'm just going to call them protagonist <laughs> aliens. <laughs> and like also when you say like working in different media helps you sort of define the form. And it's like, because if you look at if you look at these protagonists, like contrapposto is so important and like the way that the light is hitting the form like gives them that three-dimensionality. Mm -hmm. um, so here in this room, I just want us, I would like to hear from you about what just walking us through a composition because your works have been described as poetic, eerily, surrealistic, um, dark, etc. And at the same time, there's also this wonderful hope, right? And that brings to mind, and we could talk about different traditions, both uh, literary and art historically, where this, there's tension between darkness and light. And so, for example, we could look perhaps, and I don't want to like put any anyone in a, in, a, in a box, so to speak, <laughs> but um, like looking at, I was thinking when I was looking at your work about Persian, Philosophers and artists like Nizami's Kafkar or, or Mir Gamad, for example, uh, this philosophy of light, and that there's this need to actually you can't experience the light unless you experience the dark, and the feeling of light is actually felt once you've experienced the dark. So that's like something I really love about your exploration as an artist. So. This one, for example, your title references that tension, right? Utopia, dystopia. Can you talk us through this canvas? Um, I have to say that I have a uh, contradictory sense of feeling while I was painting uh, these stories. At the same time, uh, I mean, having experienced positive uh, 
emotion, like finding sanctuary and comfort to just putting my uh, figure in an uh, apocalyptic uh, world. And at the same time, uh, experiencing negative uh, uh, emotion like despair, like uh, isolation. Uh, so I was challenging with those with these uh, mixing feeling all the time. But uh, especially uh, for these, uh, I mean painting. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I told you that um, I had a. a like a uh, personal kinship with this uh, plastic bottles and uh, as an immigrant I was trying to understand how a lack of compatibility and integration can impact the body and the uh, mind but later after all those um, unfortunate uh, events that happened in Iran uh, and then pandemic I was like how other aspects, like politically, socially, culturally, can impact uh, on these bodies. So, uh, and I was trying to understand how social political organizations system and with their uh, dysfunctional uh, social structure can impact on body. So, for this one, um, I was trying to uh, show my uh, show the figures. This uh, first uh, around a barren, uh, I mean, ground. And uh, I uh, set up the building, the crumbled building at the back of the uh, composition. And it was, for me, it was like a UFO, uh, but I don't know how much I was successful to show that. But, uh, and it, uh, had some touch from some uh, region which came in up from the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, so right here in the center of the composition? Exactly. Oh, so it's elevated. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Well, it's easy to see, yeah. Yeah, and I entitled it Utopia or Dystopia, and I was, I was challenging to myself, is it the building or is this uh, architectural structure is is the reason of being uh, in misery or in joy. So that's why I entitled it uh, Utopia or Dystopia. Yeah. Uh, and for this one, yeah, uh, this as you can see, there are some figures that uh, detach, uh, I mean, uh, separated from sunlight into chamber, and they were uh, sneaking around. And uh, I was trying to challenge it that how um, a source of life can bring them out, and uh, uh, even though they are uh, scaring to see each other, how uh, this, uh, I mean, this source of life can impact uh, on them and on the reaction of them. So, um, as I mentioned before, in some of them, I intentionally uh, try to not. Uh, mention any familiar building, especially for this one. Right. And also for that one, um, those figures who were uh, looking down at the deep uh, hole, uh, in order to, uh, I was challenging the state of power. Uh, that's why I entitled it, um, who is looking at whom? And what I zoom in to my uh, painting, I am trying to find a uh, and figure out how those social political running system can impact, like controlling. And um, I try to mention these kind of things uh, in my work when I zoom in. But when I zoom out, uh, I'm trying to find other aspects of uh, this pressure. Mm -hmm. And that perspective, perspective is also another part of your work that mm -hmm. has an organizational, as an organizational tool in terms of placing your figures in space, mm -hmm. but also has, as you mentioned, with the one across the way who's looking at whom, I believe mm -hmm. it's called, um, has um, a narrative value. And here is, again, that, that sense of hope that although the figures are so much in decay, which mm -hmm. you do so beautifully in terms of your painterly technique, 
but how they're coming out of sort of, they're egressing, they're coming out. They look also as though they're in conversation mm -hmm. um, with one another and that there is light and hope towards the end. And that's like, again, this importance when we talk about melancholy arts. Mm -hmm. And we also like, we often emphasize the sadness, but with that sadness, melancholy arts also allow us to have a conversation about what's at the other side of this, that you actually need an apocalyptic aspect and a death in order to have a rebirth. And I think that's like so important for like what we've been through and, and since 2020 and now and what's going on, like that important that important point of there has to be a depth to have like new generations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what your work so beautifully raises. And with that, I just wanted to pause and um, see if there's any questions in the audience. We have time for, a, for two to three questions. I have a question. Looking at all of your art, I'm wondering about your process. Did you think about the entire series before you started it, or did it come one at a time? Because it looks like it's the same color palette, almost the same size and scale, and um, was it, I, I don't see any major difference in the, you know, the workmanship and the artistry in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can explain that. Sure. Um, for um, I mean, this palette, I was trying to add color, but uh, I couldn't, honestly. And then uh, after a while, again, I co covered with the, the gray palette. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I started with uh, uh, drawing. But before drawing, I uh, explored this form with a variety of uh, techniques, like boiling, heating, and then uh, compressing them. But all the time, these techniques and these medium overlapping each other. Uh, why I uh, based on uh, I need uh, them through my uh, exploration. So uh, I can say that uh, I first did the painting, did the drawing, and then uh, sculpture because I had a lot of time that I had to go and uh, realize what is the form uh, during the process. So uh, they overlap in each other. Yeah. So the earliest drawing in the sequence in the other area um, references very specifically a woman's form. And uh, one of the things I'm wondering about is what her work was before. Was it more social realist because she was it on? Uh, did, did coming to Los Angeles for you to think uh, more of uh, expressionistically, more abstractly, to uh, work with things that aren't necessarily specific? Mm. Um, I think most of my work are like kind of figurative. And uh, the previous, uh, I mean, collection that I had uh, in Iran was about glasses. And I was trying to um, change the functionality of glasses uh, on my uh, portrait. So I can say that uh, mostly uh, it's not uh, abstract at all. And uh, it's kind of realistic, but in different way, because it can be surrealist, it can be sometimes, um, yeah, it's just mixing of this, uh, I mean, approaches. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? No. Oh, here we have. Uh -huh. is, is any of the cultures, or all the cultures you have seen, do they inspire you differently, or is, do you see a commonality between these cultures that may have inspired you to the art itself? Um, you know, I think um, this figure kind of uh, universal uh, universal uh, thing that it can be matched with different uh, ethnicity and a different culture. 
because the things that I was uh, trying to express is about how all those, uh, I mean, pressure impact on body. So it can be from many things, from many, I mean, culture. So in some way, I can say that it's like a universal uh, uh, aspect. Uh, like this, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see it as a human exactly. experience. Yes. So. And then I've heard this question asked, and I want to ask it again. What soundtrack would go with these? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what would be? What would be the <laughs> what, so let's back. We could broaden that out. So I'm like, what are some of your visual and sonic or literary inspirations, and maybe like other artists that inspire you? Mm -hmm. And then perhaps like, do you listen to music? Why? Thank you. I really uh, all the time was inspired uh, with a classic uh, painter like Caravaggio, like uh, Hieronymus Bosch. And uh, most of the time, when I go, want to just uh, enjoy and. Uh, from all those painters that I really interested, I go and uh, to the book that uh, like Hieronymus Bosch or um, Caravaggio. How can I? Where apocalyptic scenes are so important and mm -hmm. also like dark, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And regarding to the music, mm -hmm. um, I can't say that, it's, but mostly I would love to just uh, listen to my. Uh, homeland music with touch of like a uh, contemporary touch but I can't say specifically which one but uh, I am more connected during my uh, exploration with those kind of music thank you yeah. and thank you very much for coming and we're going to give some Exhibition and also Fowler Museum, especially Emmy. Uh, I really appreciate uh, and it's my honor to be. Honor. Yeah, thank you so much. And also Fahan Foundation who support me and uh, Kurosh who designed this beautiful catalog. Ah, it's a beautiful catalog. <laughs> yeah.